Hey you guys, welcome back. All right, so this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, we haven't done a Procreate video in quite a while, so I'm looking forward to this one. Um, today we're going to do a flat disc for a disc bound planner digitally. Um, this is not going to be the top view that you would see if you were like looking at an open planner. Instead, this was if you opened the package of discs and laid them flat on your table. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first and foremost, I started with a square canvas in Procreate. Uh, square simply because it's the one that I use the most often. You could really use any one you want to. And then I went ahead and drew a simple coffin shape. Um, if you're going to do a cutout on your ring or on your disc, you want to make sure that it is one solid piece. Like if I had, say, a flower where the center of the flower and the petals were separate, that wouldn't really work if it was a physical item because there would be nothing connecting the center of the flowers to the actual disc and it kind of destroys the illusion. So stick to something a little more simple. A solid cutout piece works best for this. So before we do anything with the actual disc itself, we're going to work with our outline. So I just used a plain inking brush to draw the shape and then I'm going to tap the layer, slide to the left and duplicate it. So now I have two copies and the bottom copy I am going to drop color into so it is a solid piece. Then we can go ahead and start a new layer, same inking pen, and I'm going to draw a circle. And when you draw in Procreate, if you draw your circle and then do not lift up your stylus or finger, it will automatically smooth out that shape for you. And then if you let go, you'll see at the top of the screen, it says edit shape. You can tap that, tap circle, and it makes it a perfect circle. So now I'm going to hit my move button here on the left. And because I have it set to uniform with my snapping on, I can move it and watch for those yellow um, crosshair lines. And that's going to tell me that it is centered both vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to do the same thing actually with my little coffin here. It should already be. Okay. I was going to say it should already be centered, but I wanted to make sure. So now I'm on layer three, which is our circle layer. I'm going to duplicate it twice. So our bottom layer, same thing. We're going to fill that in and then I'm going to turn that layer off so we can see what we're doing with the other two. I'm going to select the top layer, select my move tool, Make sure that uniform is on at the bottom so that your perf your circle stays a perfect circle. And then you can drag it down. And this is creating the, um, the thick part of the disc that the paper holds on to. And you can make these as thick as you want to. That's one of the fun things about digital. If you wanted a disc with like really chonky edges, you could literally come down to like here and just like make it really fat, which I think I'm going to do because I think that would be cute. So now we have our middle ring, our outer ring, and then our base layer, which is turned off. So I'm going to take two fingers and pinch the top two layers together. This doesn't always go smooth. So now those two are on the same layer. So now I can turn on our base layer, touch it. And then at this point, we need to make our cutout. So on my it's filled in coffin layer. Okay, I'm going to tap it and then I'm going to hit select. So now I have selected that coffin shape. Hit my layer panel, go to my solid circle, which is our base layer. Hit the move button and slide. See, I have that coffin shape. I'm going to slide it off of the canvas to erase it. Now we can delete our filled in coffin layer and we have our shape on our base layer. So we're sitting pretty right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move our base layer to the bottom. Think base layer, bottom. And at this point, I'm going to turn it into a different color because I want to be able to see what I'm working on. And if you do want a black disc, which let's be honest, who doesn't? You want to make it so that it's a dark gray. That way you have some space within your pixels to um, shadow. So if I were to drop this here, then you can see that the black of the top outline is still visible. That's what's going to give it that realism is to have those um, dark shadow layers. 
However, for this demonstration, I'm not going to do black because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So maybe I'll do like a pastel purple like that. Okay. So, all right. The reason that we duplicated our cutout shape layer was so that we could kind of cheat the system and make our outline or our shadow of the cutout using that layer. So I have layer two selected, which is the outline of my coffin shape. I'm gonna select my adjustments panel, Gaussian blur, layer. And now you're gonna touch the screen with your stylus and slide to the right. And if you go too far, it's not gonna look as good. I usually go to about like 10% ish. So right around there and then just tap the layer panel. So now you can see we have uh, a shadow area inside the cutout. We don't want that to stay there. So we're gonna select our disc base layer, select our selection panel, which is the one that looks like the little s. I have mine set to automatic. I'm gonna touch the coffin space in the middle. And then if, you, if yours is like this, then you have to slide your stylus to the left a little bit. You only want to select that middle empty area. And then I'm going to touch my layers. I'm going to touch my coffin outline layer. Right now, only the empty space in the middle of the disc is selected. So if I hit my move um, option, I can pull that shadow off. And you see it left a bit of an outline shadow on the disc, which is exactly what we want. So at this point, we're sitting kind of pretty. Now we're gonna go to our top layer, which is our dual outline right here, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit our adjustment panel, Gaussian blur, layer, tap the screen, slide to the right. Now I'm gonna go a little extra, see how it's not too visible there, watch. If I come down to here, like this, and then I dupe this layer, then I can again go to the Gaussian blur and make it super done. So you can have these outlines as crisp or as faint as you want and also as dark or as light as you want. Um, I think we'll stick, see I want something kind of halfway in between. Okay, so I'm gonna take our Uber layer and just bring the opacity down a little bit like that. And then I'll delete that first one. So now we have a flat sort of shape that we're working with, but we're gonna make it look better. So now I'm gonna tap our base layer, tap it again and hit select. So now we have only the base layer selected. I'm gonna hit plus for a new layer, take black and take a shading brush. Now, usually you can find these in the airbrush section on Procreate. They do come with the app. And I want to just kind of add a little more shading on the outside. I'm just drawing a circle and then I'm going to hold, let Procreate create my circle, and then I can adjust it. See, there's a few super strong shaded pieces here that I'm not too fond of, but I can fix those because I can go to my eraser tool and you want to pick the light, light brush, bring the opacity to about 50% and just lightly brush it over the spots where there's too much shading. You might not even have to do this. I kind of went heavy handed with my shading circle. And now this doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical all the way around because when you figure shadows in real life, they're not always perfect when you're dealing with an object that has ridges and bumps on it. So I'm gonna, again, select my base layer, hit my plus sign, shading tool. This time I'm gonna make it smaller because I wanna shade right around the inner ring, like here. I don't want it quite that small. And this is a hit or miss practice situation, so don't, don't get upset if you don't get it perfectly the first time. I never do, as you just saw. But I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shadow definition here. And if it's not, again, if you're heavy handed like I am, just finish your little drawing here, and then you can lower the opacity. 
and I'm going to clean up this one just a bit with my um, soft brush eraser. There we go. So now we've got pretty okay sh uh, shadows, but we need to add some highlights. So I'm again going to select my base layer. This time I'm going to go to the very top, select white. And I like to use the studio pen for this part because I want my light to come from this side and it's going to touch here. So then I can hit my Gaussian blur and drag it over. See how it created that kind of bump in the, um, in the ring? And then also I'm gonna plus keep my uh, studio pen, but I wanna add my light layers here to give our inner ring a little bit of depth. Plus right here along the line of my coffin cutout, I wanna add a little bit of a catch light right there too. And again, I'm gonna do the Gaussian blur to kind of make those pop. I think I, these two aren't working well together, these two um, strokes. So I'm going to take off this one, keep the other one, cause I like how that looks and then just create this one again on a new layer so that I can control independently what it looks like when I blur it out. There we go. Okay, so for me personally looking at this, I think the outside of mine is a little too dramatic. I think it's up here. Yeah, it's this one right here. So I'm gonna take my soft brush again and I'm just gonna do a loop around just to erase some of the harshness on that outline. And then I do want to, I'm gonna duplicate our center one, that's better. I duplicated the coffin one to give it a little more depth. And then I'm going to take off some of the shadow underneath this highlight because we all know that makes no sense. There we go. And then I think looking at this, I want to add a little bit of highlight here. And then blur that out as well. Yeah, that gives it a little more, little more depth. And then um, you can test your color or your highlight and shading theory by changing the color of your base. See, if you if I were to make a really dark disc, then my highlight colors are way too bright. But if I'm going to keep this one as a lighter shade, then the highlights look great. So it's always a good idea to not merge all of your layers together. Like I'm gonna merge my highlight layers together and my shadow layers together. So now I can adjust them independently of each other. So if I made my base really dark, I can come up here and adjust my highlights down slightly or vice versa. If I made my base really light, I could come over here and adjust my uh, shadows down slightly. So mess around with it. This is obviously not the, uh, the perfect rendition because I am just doing this really quickly. However, with a little, whoops, wrong eraser. With a little bit of playing, I think it could be jazzed up quite a bit. There we go. And what you can also do is I'm going to make my base black touch, select, new layer, and where it says layer four, I'm gonna tap and then select clipping mask. I'll pick my, maybe this purple. And then if you have any like fancy texture brushes or foil brushes, then you can make foil discs. Oh, that didn't work, hold on. Which is also another fun thing that you can do. So there you go, you guys. That is the basic idea of how I make flat disks in Procreate. Um, 
The upright versions are pretty similar in execution. If you guys want me to do a video on those, just let me know. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.